Well, this looks like it needs some attention. Oh, welcome. Thank you for joining me on my little look over of my ICU orchids. Especially the ones I see you now. The question is for how much longer? So this is a Lycasti that has never done well for me. I think it is a Klassen Orchidae orchid. And they are known for a fantastic selection of what they offer, but the quality of their plants are awful. So this Lycasti is desiccating this bulb. It's not rotted. It's just the energy has gone out of it. So we're going to take it out and see what it continues to do. I mean, you know, it has tried some new growths. This one is trying a bulb right there. This is another new growth, but I don't have much hope for this little light casty. I don't think my climate is conducive for a good part of the year to what they prefer. They like it cooler, and I can't provide that. Not for at least seven, eight months of the year. Let me just reposition. Oh, I think this will work. Um, yeah, another thing, I see you, but not for long. My Cochleoda volcanica is oregano. Crispy, dry, that's it. She's leaving the collection, not by choice, but never got it right. She was a Schwerta orchid. She was a very weak orchid from when I got her and has never really recovered or managed to do anything. So it's a shame. Cochleota volcanica is out the door. That was quick. Uh, how we are? An eBay purchase. I've had her for two years, two and a half. Never really managed to take off. It's been in a sphagnum moss basket set up for all of its life with me, pretty much. I potted it up into the semi hydro LECA self watering setup. But yeah, no. It didn't take two weeks and I knew that wasn't going to work, so I took it out. And since then, this is what I'm trying to work with. Growing some roots, I will remove the moss here to allow for fresher moss to be on the top because I'm not sure about this little touch of algae. But there's not much more that I can do with this one at this point. I still haven't mounted it, and that's what I do want to try. Put it on a micro mount, take advantage, and see what happens with those roots. So, how we are a lava burst? I still see you, which is not such a bad thing. What else have I got? Yeah, my little bellatum, my little Paphiopedum bellatulum XL. Doesn't look like an XL, does it? <laughs> but it has some little roots going down, whether they're viable or not, I'm not entirely sure. It has matured this leaf since we saw it last. The leaf has substance to it, it is shiny, and excuse my hands now, and now it's growing another one right down there. So I'm going to hold on to it for a little while longer and see what it does, see how it goes. No point throwing this little guy away, as long as he's growing and showing signs of some leaf growth. Paphiopedlum bilatulum XL. A mini one. <laughs> I also, when I did the Schomburgia cuts, I took off the back bulbs and I just kept them, but nothing is happening, so I just wanted to point that out because you know, you see an eye, it's black, it's woody. But you never know with these guys. The bulbs have shriveled a little bit. Same here. I have, this eye is gone now. 
Here's another eye. I mean, I don't see much hope here at all. But I don't know. They're not in the way. I'm holding on to them and see what happens. Just out of curiosity, really. Not expecting too much. I took the Panarica back bulb off when I got my Panaricas. That didn't have an eye and that just gave up. Nothing happened at all since then. The Hibiki Keikis are off to a new owner. They're not with me anymore. But here's Dendrobium Bariota, the Keikis that we took off together. And what would you know? It's growing a, two new growths. Each Keiki has its own new growth. And as I spill water, that's fine, we're outside. But that's pretty cool, that's quick. That's quick going. And the roots down there are doing quite well as well. And what I think I need to do is change the position in the pot. Look at that. It's incredible. Why, why are you going in the back? What, what's the deal? All this room here and you're growing back here. That's so typical. That is so typical. Oh well, I'm not, I'm not gonna change the position now now. If I get more Dendrobium Bariota cakeys that I need to work with, I will do it all together right now. They're not in any way cramped in that little space there, but it is bizarre. Of all the areas they can grow in, they choose to grow that way. Orchids, orchids, I tell you. So another ICU is my Rinko Stylis Gigantea. Uh, yeah, no changes, but that is not going to amount to anything. So I see you, but not for long. There's nothing happening here. And I think it's a very, very slow death. And that won't be around with us much longer, I don't think. It was a healthy, healthy plant for me. And I botched it up and it was my third Rinko Stylus. So I'm not getting any more. Clearly I'm doing something wrong or my environment, just, I just can't hack it and keep them happy enough with enough humidity. I did the Pastoral Innocence repot cut despite being in sheath. And this is what I've done with the cut. The eye is still looking good. I hope you can see that there through the bottle. It's still looking good. A little bit more shriveled, the bulbs, but that's to be expected. So I'm not too concerned and we'll see how it goes. If it's going to manage to even grow, it should have enough energy in the back. A little experiment going, it doesn't take up much space yet. We'll see how it goes in the winter. And here's my Lelia purpurata Werkhäuseri. And uh, this one, the eye is looking still the same. It hasn't changed. Uh, this one's okay to take out because it's easy to put back in. So you can see here's the eye that I'm interested in. And the back holes have shriveled a little bit. That's to be expected. But other than that, no, that's just sphagnum moss. I thought I'd broken one new root, but it's not. It's sphagnum moss. But yeah, so just to show the cut when I took care of that orchid. Nothing to show for just yet. Just holding on to them and see what happens. Here, next up, is my Dendrobium tangerinum, which took forever to even do something. It's been lying on this hop filter since I got the hop filter a couple of months ago. And look at it now. This is all I've got it on, just some water. RO water, a layer of hop filter to simulate sphagnum moss. And look at this little one go. One, two, and I see down there is a third. So I'm laying it down because I would like the roots to go in. I also have it facing, the light is coming from this direction because should I be so lucky that these actually grow, because this is the only sustenance cane there is, all the other canes are desiccated and of absolutely no use. 
So if these even have a chance to get up there, I would like the roots to go down into this material and the keikis go up and grow in a straight direction and even if they want to curve towards the light depending on how much energy this cane still has and then I could pot them up but look at that dendrobium tangerinum if it is a tangerinum but it went downhill super fast when I got it in 2018 didn't want to know anything about trying to survive and look at this two years later it's trying something I may need to cut these canes off in the back because if they are starting to mold, then that's not a good thing. But amazing little attempt at recovery. And I'm gonna hold on to that and see what else they can do. And then here is my little no ID that I need to actually quickly treat with some alcohol. It's, I don't know if that scale is old from when we did the video about maintenance and you know taking care of the ICU patients. So I don't know if that was a new scale or old, but just in case, it's whatever it is, it's gone now. So here is the little candidate and the root is history, which is concerning because that's all it had it grew another little leaf. Can you believe it? These guys are fascinating. That's why I can't give up on Phalaenopsis because they want to. If you somehow figure out to help save them, they want to live. Just checking if there's sticky stuff underneath here. Sticky is usually a sign of scale in my environment. Can be happy sap. But if this guy has happy sap, I'd be very surprised. There's nothing there. So here we are. There is still what I called hope when I took them and cleaned them up and took care of them in that video. There is still something I call hope. But other than that, little freckles is a fighter, but I don't know if the two of us are gonna win this fight. I have no idea. So she sits just on lava rock and that wet microfiber touches the lava rock at all times and then is close to her, what used to be the only root she had and now that's gone. So we shall see what little freckles does. For now, I see you, but I hope, so. I hope for a considerable amount of time Last but not least, this looks like something my grandmother used to pickle. This is my little attempt at trying to keep humidity around the leaves and the core. Look at unicorn. Look at what unicorn is doing. Are you kidding me? It is also just sitting on lava rock. And look at that little root nub in there. These are all new leaves from when we saw her last and put her into the setup. Is this possibly the first time I will ever get an orchid to come back? So I just took that leaf on off because it was very loose and I want these roots. I only thought I had one from what I could see through the glass. I want these roots to make it and not come up against the resistance of that leaf. So look at that, it's trying. Oh la la, keep your fingers crossed for us, please, please. This would be the first ever time I could save an orchid. And if this works, I may just keep her in water culture and do what Danielle does and see how she fares. Isn't that amazing? This was the leaf, and this was the leaf that was growing when we saw her last. And then since then, she is pushing out fast and furiously. How, where she gets the energy from, it beats me. But how can you not admire the fight that these plants have and do your best to get them through? I really hope, I really hope that this will be the first time 
that I can bring an orchid back from near death. So, that was my little rundown of my ICU patients or knickknacks that I have standing around that I would like to keep in my collection. As with the cuttings there, the back divisions of the Cattleyas, and I was giving them a once over, and I'm glad that you joined me on this little brief look at what is going on with the stragglers, the weak ones, the dead ones. Fingers crossed that we've got it right with one. And maybe the others decide to grow a new growth and eventually become strong enough and viable enough to pass on to others who would like to have these kinds of cuts. Check out how this little unicorn's roots have gone through the leaf. It's incredible, the strength they have. It always fascinates me. Anyway, <laughs> thank you everybody. <laughs> thank you for joining me on this little look-see. I appreciate having you here. I hope that you have a wonderful day. You continue to stay safe. Take care. Bye.